welcome back students so today we are going to start a new module the module this is named as the virial equation of states and intermodal potentials in the previous modules what we have seen is we have seen the monoatomic the diatomic and the polyatomic gases or molecules we also obtain the canonical and the other microcanonical partition function so in this particular module we have been talking till now about very monoatomic gases that is those gases or polyatomic gases where there is no interaction between molecules now in the real life this doesn't happen you have some interaction among molecules so when you have interaction among molecules so you should have some interaction potential between the molecules of the gas so with that intermolecular potentials you will then have to derive the virial equation so this particular lecture actually starts with the what we call the derivation of the virial equation of state so the current lecture states the virial equation of state for polyatomic molecules so what we will do we will see the concept of the configurational integral now this is the particular integral which actually relates the non ideality of any gaseous mixture and then we will see how a pairwise additivity assumption is very good for deriving the intermolecular potential so it means that uh, if i have two atoms one and two what is the interaction potential between atoms one and two so like that if there are n number of atoms so what is the interaction potential of the one atom with three and then four with five so all can be written pair wise so it may be u12 plus u13 plus u14 like that so that's what it is called as pair wise identity as assumption so what we will now start is to first define a configurational okay integral and uh, the starting point of the configurational integral is the intermolecular potential and before we go into the intermolecular potential we need to understand certain aspects like whether we take a monoatomic gas or a polyatomic gas and if we take a monoatomic or polyatomic what are the assumption involved is very important when we finally derive the intermolecular potential so we assume that the molecules interact and the energy of this interaction contributes the total energy of the system so this must be taken into account in the partition function because till now what we are doing with diatomic or polyatomic molecules we are finding the five different partition function you have the by now you must know what are those five these may be the translational the electronic the vibrational then the nuclear okay so these are different and rotational so these are different parts of partition function but there must be some which should to take into account the interatomic potential so it means what we are doing is we will see three cases so monoatomic polyatomic diatomic which is all here there is no interaction so let us suppose we take the case of a dilute gas then we will take the case of a medium uh, concentrated gas and then we will take the case of a concentrated gas so we will take three cases and study one by one so in this case it is moderately dilute gases we are assuming the molecules are disordered we will do what we will for the prediction of the interatomic potential we will use a mathematical technique called graph theory to derive the virial equation of state so for this virial equation of state we need to assume certain assumption should be there for the atoms for example if we are talking about n number of atoms if you are talking about n number of atoms so how can we define the n number of atoms this n number of atoms can be specified by a collection of vectors by a collection of vectors so you need both the special special vectors that is where it is what are the distances what are the coordinates so it means you need the difference coordinates of the individual atom r1 r2 like that rn so these are the coordinates of n vectors so it means each of this r will contain coordinates of x y and z okay each of this r will contain coordinates of x y and z so then there will be n translational quantum vectors that is which will give due to the velocity there is the kinetic energy part component so for that you will have momentum so what are the momentum n different angular quantum momentums or translational quantum vectors that is l1 then l2 like that 
up to ln. So again each of this L is equivalent to the particular quantum number. Let us suppose we are talking about the jth. So it will be Lxj, Lyj and Lzj. Okay, it talks about the quantum numbers across x, y and z coordinate. So it means with this description we can now define the potential energy potential energy of interaction for the n particle system. So what is that potential? You can define this is the one which we need to define that is u which is a function of r1, r2, r3. So I can put either this on top or it is below the same thing it is a vector similarly rn. So these type of expression I need to propose that is the potential energy of interaction for a n particle system. Okay. So the collection of vectors can be given by the spatial coordinates and with the translational quantum number vectors L1, L2. This is what we will be assuming. So while doing the assumption, there are further some more assumptions. What is that? Particles are spherically symmetric. So we are considering all the atoms or particles to be symmetric. Let's say, say it's a spherical. So interaction energy in that case when I talk about the potential U. So it is R1, R2. So it means the interaction potential is only the function of the particle location. It is not function of the type of or shape of the particle. Okay. For example, if you have some let us say uh, polyatomic molecules, then maybe you will have to also give the orientation of the atom. What angle wall theta it is oriented across the horizontal and the vertical axis. Then the particular potential function, the interatomic potential would have been a function of both spatial coordinates as well as the its orientation coordinates. In this case to make it simple that is why we will go ahead with simple monoatomic gas. So another assumption is we will say that the kinetic and the internal or the electronic energies are quantized variables and the potential energy but we will assume it as a classical variable. Why classical variable? Because it is assumed that a small changes in position will produce very small interaction energy changes. So it can be assumed as a classical variable. So the spacing between the potential energy that is why we say it is infinitesimal which is very small. And also we will assume that the kinetic energy states available for a particle is not affected by its interaction with other particles. So whatever energy states a particular atom has access to is not dependent upon the other particles or atoms. That is why we consider n identical monoatomic particles because if we are taking polyatomic the calculations will be much more complex because you need to take care of the orientation also instead of spatial coordinates is there but orientation is also there the coordinates. So this makes the calculation complex so we will focus our attention only on the monoatomic particle because our aim is to finally derive a virial equation of state from internal atomic potential. So let us take the simplest case which is of the monoatomic gas. Just to summarize what we said just now that the polyatomic gases if we are considering we need to consider both the position and orientation of each molecule as well as its translational, rotational, vibrational quantum numbers. So if you are wanting to derive our equation that is the virial equation state for polyatomic gases you need all these properties translational, rotational, vibrational quantum numbers which is makes it much complex. So potential energy then also will become a function of both position and the orientation of each of the molecules. The calculation thus becomes complex hence to study real gases we will assume monoatomic gases. So if we assume monoatomic gases we will assume n such atoms and each of the atom will have a set of allowable kinetic and internal energy states which are unaffected 
by the presence of other atom. So, now let us write that expression. Let us suppose a particular macroscopic state I, how we write the total energy of this system of a macroscopic system I in terms of single atom energy level. So, the overall energy then becomes E i, E i is equal to summation j goes from 1 to n, then E j the internal energy. So, internal energy means primary electronic energy, then you add up all the cross terms. So, j is to 1 that is cross terms means your translational energy terms that is h square 8 m v 2 by 3 then it is multiplied by the angular quantum numbers or the translational quantum numbers that is l i x j whole square plus l i y j whole square plus l i z j whole square plus your interatomic potential u, u thus will be a function of r 1, r 2, r n okay, vectors. Obviously, all of this are we are referring to a ith macrostate. So, what is this? This is the internal energy which is a function of the electronic energy. This term is the translational term, translational energy because it is a monoatomic gas, you will only have electronic and translational, you will not have any vibrational rotational energy term and a cross term that is the interaction potential between the atoms. So, I can write the partition function in this manner, canonical partition function nvt it will take q of internal n 2 pi m k t by h square 3 n by 2. Then what I will do? I will write an integral. So, this is I suppose you know this is the partition function due to the internal modes that is for the electronic energy and if there are n number of atoms, you multiply by n with a n factorial in the denominator and this is the translational term contribution. Then the remaining term what I will be multiplying will be due to the effect of real gases. So, what is that? That will be I will write here V n into C then across e to the power of minus u of R 1, R 2 like that up to R n pi k t. So, this will be a multi dimensional integral term. So, you will integrate across n terms. So, I will write down the n terms. What will be those n terms? d r 1, d r 2 like that up to d r n. So, this c is a constant which is used the fact that to make it dimensionally consistent. We will find out the value of c in the next slide. So, what have we done is we have described a total energy of the ith macrostate which is the sum of the electronic energy, translation energy and the internal potential. Then what I have done is I will replace those in the expression for canonical partition function. So, the first two terms you are well aware of but the last term is the integral term which is equal to a some constant then a multidimensional integral then the interactive potential because this is the energy term into the n dimensional integrals. So, now with this expression we will move ahead. So, it means if I can uh, just break down this expression q of n v t by n factorial into n just I will write down the entire expression what I did wrote down in the previous slide then we will go ahead. So, this is raised to the power of 3 n by 2 because there are n number of atoms then v to the power of n the volume then the constant then the multidimensional integral. So, it will be e to the power of minus u 
of R1, R2, Rn, okay, by Kt into D of R1, D of R2, like that, up to D of Rn, okay, this is the entire expression. So, this particular closed integral, this particular closed integral of this entire term with respect to drj, okay, this particular integral with respect to dr, I can then also break down into its individual x, y and z coordinates. So, it is integrated across all v, then it will be some term, then it will be dx i, dy i and dz i, okay. So, this is the term I can break, the dr then breaks down to dx dy dz. Okay, this you have to use frequently. Now, we what we will do is we will do one thing. We know we have already know the expression. So, what is this? Q we know is in the absence of any intermodic potential in the absence of any interacting potential, we know Q is this. So, it means in the presence of interacting potential, the term starting from C, this term has to be 1 for ideal gas, this term has to be unity for ideal gas, for ideal gas we know this is the expression, so it is multiplied by this term, it means that when it is multiplied by this term, it appears it for a ideal gas instead of ideal gas it will be appearing for a non-ideal gas. For the non-ideal gas it implies this integral across the multidimensional integral e to the power of minus u of r1, r2, rn by kt is equal to unity 1. So, it means when a u of r1, r2, rn is equal to 0, we have integral of v e to the power of minus u of r1, r2, rn by kt. So, I will have r1 dr2 drn. Okay. So, this means this part, if this is u is 0, then this will be equal to v to the power of n, is not it? This will be equal to v to the power of n. If that is true, so it means this is also true, c v to the power of n is equal to 1 or we got an expression for the constant. The constant expression is v to the power of minus n. Okay. So, it means I can write down the Q value, Q of n v t as equal to 2 pi m k t by h square to the power of 3 n by 2 Q internal to the power of n by n factorial is nothing equals to e to the power of minus u of r1, r2, rn by kt. This is the expression. Then q, because this is v to the power of n, so I am replacing v to the power of n as this expression. So, if that is true, what I will do is, I will write this expression as z. This is what we call as the configurational integral. So, it means the configurational integral then becomes z or z which is a z of n v t is equal to e to the power of minus u of r1 r2 rn by kt into dr1 dr2 brn. So, it means if you want to find out the effect of non-ideality, you need to find out this configurational integral. So, you, for that you need the value of this u, you need the value of u should be specified what is the expression for 
for u. So you do a multidimensional integral and find the z value, that is it. So once you have the z value, you can also calculate thermodynamic properties. For example, what are the thermodynamic properties we can study from this expression? So let us say A, you know A for canonical expression is minus kt ln q, okay. So it means from that earlier expression, I can write down as minus n k t q internal plus n k t ln. Actually, this is for n factorial, so it is in the denominator. When it comes to the numerator, it is positive minus n k t minus n k t plus 3 n k t plus 3 n k t ln of this de Broglie's wavelength which I have did earlier minus k t into ln of z. So this, so this is de Broglie's wavelength. So you must be knowing you can just refer to the expression de Broglie's wavelength. So I have just replaced that term of that 2 pi m k t by h s square in terms of de Broglie wavelength. If you do that, then you simplify this term. So you can also get the pressure. What is the pressure value? You know it is the partial derivative of the Helmholtz free function with respect to volume. So if you do that, when number of molecules and temperature is constant, you will get equal to k t dou ln z by dou v. So this is the expression for pressure. So it means that now just see if this u is equal to 0, no interaction between the atoms, then what will be z? z will be nothing but v to the power of n or from this expression, from the previous expression, this actually reduces to an ideal gas law that is n k t by v when you do the derivative of z with respect to v. Okay. So that is how it actually reduces to the ideal gas law when z equal to vn that is when there is no interatomic potential or no interaction between the atoms. So rest of the module or rest of the chapter will actually be dealing with of this expression that is p by rho kt the virial equation of state which is nothing but 1 by b2 t plus b3 b2 t into rho rho is the gas density, then B 3 T into rho square plus like that. So this is nothing but a Taylor series, Taylor series expansion of rho. So this B2, B3, these are all virial coefficients. You must be knowing the second order virial coefficient, third order virial coefficient. Now our aim is to obtain this B2, B3 in terms of these integrals. So B2, B3 will be having some value where you have this integral term of this U which is multiplied with the multidimensional volume term. Okay. So now let us, our aim is to obtain the expressions for B2, B3 likewise. So this will be given by this formula, you must be knowing the virial coefficients you have read in the classical thermodynamics. So B2T will be limit of rho approaches 0, we will have rho of P by rho KT upon D rho. Okay, this is one expression. Then B3T, we will be using this expression will be become half of limit rho equals to 0 dou square p by rho kt by d of rho square by t. And uh, likewise for nth virial coefficient, I can also use this expression as 1 n minus 1 factorial, then limit goes in the range of dilute gas solution rho tends to 0, then you will have to the power of n p by rho k t by n at constant 
temperature all of these are constant temperature so we will evaluate this b2 b3 bn likewise so now how do we evaluate those terms first we have to look back and find the expression for the interaction energy between the molecules now interaction between the molecules for two molecules is fine you I find out one two for example if there is a two molecule you can write down u of r1 r2 simply this will be nothing but u of function of the distance between them so what is the distance separation between atom 1 atom 2 so you will have a potential which is a function of the distance between the two atoms given by the vector r1 r2 this r12 here is nothing but r12 r12 here is nothing but the mod of the difference between the two vectors r1 and r2 which is equal to nothing but you have this entire thing you take the squares of them x1 minus x2 square the coordinates y1 minus y2 square plus z1 minus z2 square so this is your expression for simple two atom system now it is more than two atoms then what will you write so for that before that let us see what will be the two endpoints so if the two atoms are very close and the two atoms are far apart what will be the value of interatomic potential if so it means i can write down this as u of r12 will be approaching infinity when r12 approaches zero it means as the two atoms comes in close contact with each other the r12 approaches zero so it means there will be a tremendous interaction between the two atoms so it will just shoot up and go till infinity now what is the other part u of r12 will approach zero when when they are far apart let's say this is far apart one is here one is here and they are moving apart the distance is huge this distance so this distance is huge we say hardly there is an interaction between these two atoms so it means at that position your r12 will approach infinity so your r12 will approach infinity okay these are the two extremes if we define the interatomic potential now when it is a three particles when there is three particles or atoms three particles or atoms there is a problem because there is a third component also coming three atoms so it means it will be a function of the three variables r1 r2 r3 so which i can write down in terms of pairwise interaction potential so what is the interaction potential it is nothing but the summation of their individual cross terms u12 u of r of 1 3 plus interaction potential r of 2 3 so whether i write 1 2 or whether i write 2 1 it's the same 1 3 3 1 is same likewise 2 3 3 2 is same then this is fine can i write like this and leave it no there will be another term because when they come close to each other their atoms will get perturbed so for account for that perturbation in the electronic cloud you use another expression which is the function of all the three distances r12 r13 and r23 so this 1 2 1 3 2 3 are defined in a similar manner what i have written for the two particle system so this is means the total potential energy the previous expression is the total potential energy it's the sum of three pairwise or two body interaction terms as indicated by the first three terms on the right hand side so term 1 term 2 term 3 first three terms the final term which is the dotted one which i have made here the final term accounts for the deviation from pairwise additivity which arises from the perturbation of electronic clouds caused by the neighboring atoms it means that if the two atoms are very close to each other the third atom will perturb the electron cloud of other two atoms to account for that i am using the fourth term but right now since we are discussing monoatomic atoms we can disregard the non pairwise additive term as its impact is likely to be insignificant unless we are dealing with concentrated fluid because try to understand this we are dealing with a very dilute gas 
the, the molecules are far apart. So, we would not have this particular contribution that is the non additive term. So, we can delete this term for the time being since we are dealing with dilute gases and monoatomic gases in general. So, we come out with the pairwise additivity expression for interatomic potential. Now, let us write the expression for the interaction potential or the interaction energy between the molecules. What will be the energy? Now, we have obtained the term of u. Now, we will substitute this term into the original configurational integral that is z we derived earlier. Let us write that thing. So, I can then write down first u of r1, r2, r3 as u of r12 plus u of r13 plus u of r23. So, I can write a double summation, double summation of i, double summation of j. So, here i and j both are i is less than j, this is less than j and this is less than 1. Okay. So, it means this will be u of r i j. So, I have put the indices. So, this is valued the only for the second summation. So, this is the expression for potential. Now, we will absolute this potential. It means this potential I can write down for any number of atoms instead of 3. If I want to write down for number of atoms, let us say R1, R2, Rn. So, in general, I can write the expression as summation of I, summation of J, where both I is less than J is less than N, which is a U of R I J. So, this is the term I can write for N number of atoms, I can write the interatomic potential. So, from 3 atoms, I generalize into a N atom system. So, if I generalize, then I will write down the expression e to the power of minus u of r1 like this for rn entire inter potential by kt. Just replace this interaction potential term with the expression here. Let us suppose expression a insert expression a. If you insert the expression a, what you get is you convert them and expand them. So, e to the power of minus summation i summation j u r i j by k t which is I can write down in terms of products product terms i and j e to the power of minus u r i j by k t. Okay. So, it means here again the same expression is valid both are equal to j and less than n. So, this is what we call the assumption of pairwise additivity. So, we can write down this is the assumption of of pairwise additivity, pairwise additivity. Okay. So, then what I have is I can then write down this z as simply v, v, i, j where uh, you know these are all the terms are what we decided earlier is n then e to the power of minus u r i j by k t dr 1 dr 2 this is integrated across all the atoms, n atoms. So, this is becomes the final expression. So, if you know the potential, you can express the configurational potential or the configurational integral. So, this becomes your configurational integration. So, now the issue is how to compute this. This is a very tricky expression because you will have number of terms. So, in order to simplify this expression, they have taken the use of graph theory. So, I will just briefly discuss this graph theory for a two term or two irreducible integral. Then uh, you can proceed for the further terms later on. So, let us go because our aim is to derive the Virial equation of state. So, Virial equation of state can only be derived once you get the expression of this z. 
for that what we will do we will assume a function which is called as mayer cluster function in order to solve that particular tricky derivation so what is that we want to finally our aim is to derive the viral equation of state viral equation of state so we want to make the life simple here so we want to derive a function so that that function can replace that term which is in the exponential part because that exponential part integration is not possible so for that we define a term this is called the mayer cluster function fij which is a function of rij i will write down as equal to minus u of rij by kt minus 1 so we will write this expression so that when rij tends to 0 u of rij they becomes close to each other this will shoot up and if this shoots up this fij will be equal to minus 1 because this will be zero other end of this particular boundary condition that will be rij is equal to infinity then u of rij then we kill zero because when they are far apart there is no interaction potential is zero so it means in that case this will be unity so unity minus 1 is zero so fij is zero so we now have a function so that this function can be inserted into that because we need the term expression for this so expression for this particular term in the configuration integral can be written as the function plus 1 so that becomes bit simpler so if i now substitute it in the configuration integral it will be this expression and then One plus f i j d r one d r two d r n. This is the expression. So instead of the exponential term, now I am writing one plus f i j term. Now what I will do, I will expand it into some of products, expanding it into. sum of products okay if you expand it into sum of products you will get z equals to v v then what i will do i will expand it if you expand there is a 1 here okay so it will be 1 plus because i will put these two add multiplication term on 1 1 will be as it is then with this fij if i want to do it it will be double summation ij fij where j is greater than i and then there will be four integrals or the four summations i j then i dash and j dash then it will be fij f of i dash j dash plus like that so if we expand it there will be more and more terms then the when integral will be as it is now this pay attention what is this j is i this is straight forward but in this case you may have terms where you have i equal to j in order to separate those terms that why this complicated restrictions are given i dash j dash okay so because f12 is equal to f21 ha huh. in these type of cases to avoid these type of cases this summation of i dash j dash is given now let us see we will in this particular lecture we will see these two terms for the time being we will keep this term for the another lecture let us see this two terms for the time being so if one when is multiplied by this entire multidimensional integral what will we get so we will get the for the first term so it will be 1 into dr1 dr2 like that up to drn so we know one of them is equal to v so one so every term dr1 dr2 it is equal to v so you have to integrate over each atom so it will be v into v into v n times so it will be simply be equal to v to the power of n this is the first term 
Now the second term. Second term is V V F I J into D R one D R two D R N. This term we have to worry now. Okay, the second term F I J. So now if you see you know carefully, if it is for uh, I J, it means if I want to write in terms of I J. I can write down instead of one two. I will write here. So I, J, and finally N. So this I and J will operate only on the coordinates of ith and jth atom. It won't operate on the other coordinates. So it means the other coordinates, the other dimensions or integral we can is nothing but it will operate on the entire volume it will be simply v so you will have v into n minus 1 number of terms so n minus 2 number of terms because for two terms it won't be v so you can take out that v to the power of n minus 2 and uh, what you will be having is simply fij into dri drj Okay, it will only operate on the i and j. The remaining all volume will be multiplied and we kept outside as a constant. Or you will get v n minus 2, then summation. I can also write this as f i j. Instead of d r i, I can write down as d x i, d y i, d z i. And this as d x j, d y j and d z j. Okay, so now an important thing is how to choose the origin. So we choose the origin in order to reduce this integration integral further. We have to choose the origin, some part we have to fix, and with the respect to that particular point, we will do the integration. So we will set the origin as particle j. If you set the origin of particle j, we will change the variables, change the variables of integration from xi, yi, zi, xj, yj, zj to, to what? To xij, yij, zij. Okay? change the variables so obviously xij will be xi minus xj you make j as the reference or the origin for the integration so this jacobian of this integration particular transformation is also unity so uh, so if i want to do a integral over particle j then we will be, we can write down so we can write down as vn minus 2 then summation then fij into dxi dyi dzi into dxj dyj dzj so this we already know now it means that this to this transformation this terms become expression as fij into x dxij d x i j d y i j d z i j so we have changed the variable into then uh, the because we have taken j as the origin so it will be as it is d y j d z j okay so we have changed the vari variables of integration so once we do that so ultimately this particular expression because of this term another v can come out because of this v when it comes out it will be v minus into v then we will have only the cross terms here dx ij dy ij and dz ij that's it so it is v into n minus 1 into this summation f ij dx ij dy ij and dz ij Okay, so now we have to do the rectangular coordinates to spherical coordinates. Now this is about rectangular coordinates. We change it to spherical coordinates. 
So, I will not go into the details of this transformation because it will involve lot of mathematics. So, just for the simplest case I am showing you. So, it means that a uh, position term which is consisting of x i j, y i j and z i j, this I can transform it to r i j theta and phi, this expression. So, in that case your this entire integral term d y i j d z i j goes into r i j whole square sin theta d theta d phi into d r of i j. This is the expression you get. So, let us simplify this. We are almost close to the definition. So, we have v n minus 1 then triple integral then f i j into d x i j d y i j d z i j. This is transformed into spherical coordinates. So, if you transform them into spherical coordinates this will be the expression. This will be f i j which will be a function of only r i j then r i j square into sin theta into d theta d phi d phi d r i j ok transformation has occurred. Now, this I am not going to do it this is nothing but this integral I can write in short form v n minus 1 into 4 pi this is equal to 0 to infinity f i j by r i j into r i j whole square to d r i j. So, this is what you called as irreducible integral. You cannot reduce it further. Okay. So, this is pi not this, this is pi. Okay. So, here we can define a term beta 1 it is nothing but 4 pi of 0 to infinity f i j r i j r i j whole square d r i j. So, what does this mean? This means this integral is of the type this and this. So, I will fill it with some colors. It means the positions are to be integrated positions are to be integrated are to be integrated over the volume over the volume and the line shows and the line shows interaction between shows interaction between molecules. So, it means the it is to be this particular integral can be written graphically like this. It is you have two small spheres. So, it means you have to do the positions are to be integrated over the volume and these two further are connected by a line which shows the interaction between molecules. So, this is expression signifies this. So, finally, what we get is you have beta 1 if I want to write down in terms of rectangular also you will have beta 1 as this f i j d r i d r j is nothing but equal to 4 pi into 0 to infinity f i j r i which is a function of r i j then r i j whole square of d r i j. So, this is the expression which connects the spherical and the rectangular coordinates and this is the beta 1, this is one of the irreducible integral. So, like that we will also find out beta 2 and beta 3 and then put all those expression into the video equation of state. So, in the next class what I will do, I will not derive ex in details regarding this irreducible integral, a lot of mathematics is involved. I will write down the expressions, what is the final expression when we take into account these graphical terms and then we will finally conclude with the real equation of state. 
So, I will conclude my lecture here. Please go through the detailed derivation regarding the Wiener equation of state and the irreducible integral is given in chapter 7 of this book. Thank you. Thank you.